Carrie Fisher with a bazooka. Sunglasses in a sauna. Let's go, boys. And this show would not be this show if I did not say it's 106 miles to Chicago, we've got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. I'm Peter Billigus, and this is Money in the Movie. Hello and welcome to Money in the Movies, a show where we review films based on their financial accuracy. Today's movie is The Blues Brothers, directed by John Landis and starring John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, Carrie Fisher, and the hardest working man in show business, James Brown. Do you see the light? This movie, well actually, let me stop right there. This movie has a bunch of wonderful cameos. You know who else is in this movie? Pee Wee Herman. There he is. You know who else is in this movie? Frank Oz, the voice of Yoda. You know who else is in this movie? Aretha Franklin. You know who else is in this movie? Ray Charles. You know who else is in this movie? John Lee Hooker. And by the way, if you don't know who John Lee Hooker is, that's your problem, not mine. You know who else is in this movie? My man, Cab Calloway. And if you don't know who Cab Calloway is, then just Google him while you're Googling John Lee Hooker. Hi -de -hi -de -hi -de -hi. You know who else is in this movie? Steven Spielberg. Yeah, that's Steven Spielberg. That's him right there. We'll get back to him in a minute. Anyway, the movie begins with Jake Blues being released from prison and being picked up by his sharply dressed, sunglasses-wearing brother, Elwood. Elwood promptly takes Jake to the St. Helen of the Blessed Shroud, the orphanage where the Blues brothers spent their childhood. There they meet with the nun in charge, Sister Mary Stigmata, a woman that the Blues Brothers have nicknamed the Penguin due to her fashion choices. Though most likely the clothes were not her choice. The Penguin tells the brothers that... County took a tax assessment of this property last month. They want $5,000. The Blues Brothers offer to get the Penguin the money that she needs to save the orphanage, but the Holy Host refuses to take any money from the Blues Brothers that is gotten through nefarious means. After that, uh, the meeting doesn't go so well. The Penguin tosses the Blues Brothers out and she warns them, Don't come back until you've redeemed yourselves. The Blues Brothers head down to the basement where they meet with my man Cab Calloway. Calloway says that the orphanage has 11 days to come up with the $5,000 in property taxes or the property that Jake and Elwood grew up in will be sold to the Department of Education. Saddened by the news, Cab Calloway suggests that the brothers attend a sermon at the Triple Rock Baptist Church to hear the preachings of Reverend Cleophas, played by none other than the hardest working man in show business, James Brown. During the melodious musings of Reverend Cleophas, Jake has a revelation. That's right, it appears the good Lord himself has told Jake that he needs to get the band back together to raise the money for the orphanage. Jake and Elwood begin to assemble the old gang with their crazy nicknames, like Mr. Fabulous, Blue Lou, Bones Malone, Donald Duck Dunn, and Matt Guitar Murphy. Thank you, that was for Wilson Pickett. As the Blues Brothers assemble their band and begin to play a few gigs, they seem to upset just about everyone along the way, including a country western band, a group of neo-Nazis, the local police, the state police, the Army National Guard, and worst of all, Carrie Fisher. But the Blues Brothers are able to put on their one big concert, get their $5,000, and get to the county tax assessor's office in time. At the tax assessor's office, they give the money to Steven Spielberg. Can I help you? Told you we'd see him again. And they save the orphanage. Sadly, the brothers don't save themselves. Even though they got the $5,000 to Steven Spielberg at the tax assessor's office, they did hundreds of millions of dollars of damages in the process. Now it's time to pay for those crimes. We end the movie with the Blues Brothers doing what they do best, only this time the performance is in the prison cafeteria. Walk party in the county jail. Financially speaking though, what is going on here? 
Is the movie financially accurate? Well, financially speaking, this movie is about taxes. Taxes are fees that individuals and entities pay to the government in exchange for services that the government provides. Those services may include fire departments, police forces, and a national military. There are many different types of taxes. There are income taxes and sales taxes, and there are also taxes that are disguised as fees. A hunting license helps pay for park rangers, and the money you pay at the toll booth helps pay for the roads. Some taxes are implemented by the federal government, such as the income tax. Some taxes are implemented by the state governments, such as the sales tax. And some taxes are implemented by local governments. In the United States, one of the most popular local government taxes is the property tax. Property taxes are annual fees assessed on the value of real estate. In most cities, towns, and counties, property taxes are calculated based on a percentage of dollars per thousand dollars of the property's value. For example, a town near where I live has an annual property tax of $17.41 per $1,000 of the property's value. So if you owned a $300,000 home in that town, your annual property taxes would be $300,000 divided by $1,000 equals $300 times $17.41 equals $5,223 per year. Now, when we look at this equation, two questions should come to mind. Number one, who determines the tax rate? And number two, who determines the property's value? The tax rate is easy. That is usually determined by the city or town council, and it's based on last year's city budget and this year's projected budget. But who determines the value of the real estate? Well, that question about real estate value provides a great opportunity to talk about, well, uh, real estate value. Real estate can be valued in several different ways. One way to value real estate is by determining the market value. This is the price that both a buyer is willing to buy at and a seller is willing to sell at. Another value is the appraised value. An appraiser is a licensed professional who gives opinions about property values. Whenever you buy a home with a loan, the bank will force you to get an appraisal of the property because the bank will not loan you more than 80% of the value of the property. In order to determine how much that 80% is, the bank needs to know what the property is worth and they need to hire a professional appraiser to do that. I hope that's not your appraiser. It's important to keep in mind, appraised value does not necessarily equal market value. At times, one value can be higher than the other. Another value, and we are getting back to the movie now, is known as the assessed value. The assessed value is a value assigned by the local municipality. Every municipality has a tax assessor. Where's the office of the assessor of Cook County? Which is an individual tasked with determining the value of the properties in that town. That's where they pay the taxes, right? Right. Unlike an appraiser or a real estate agent, the tax assessor must come up with a value for every property in town, not just a few dozen properties a year. Now, the tax assessor does not have the time to inspect every single property in town, let alone inspect them every year. What's more, a government official cannot come into your house without permission or probable cause. You seriously live there? So how does the tax assessor come up with a real estate value for every single property in town? Well, rather than look at each individual property, they look at general data. One of the things they look at are past home sales. Remember, all home sales are recorded in the city or county registry of deeds. They look at current for sale prices. They look at what homes are currently being offered for. Another thing they look at, building permits. Often when someone pulls a building permit, they are renovating their property to make it better, which raises the value. They also look at national trends and other economic data, such as interest rates. Lastly, they consider the square footage of the property. Square footage helps them assign blanket values throughout the town. Assessors are often able to determine, with decent accuracy, that a residential home in their town sells for, say, $200 per square foot. Commercial real estate sells for maybe $150 per square foot. Industrial real estate sells for $85 per square foot. And vacant land sells for $25,000 per acre. With these general numbers, assessors then make adjustments. 
If the property is located in neighborhood X, it might be slightly more or less valuable. If two properties are in the same neighborhood and they have the same square footage, but one of those properties has two bathrooms and the other one has three bathrooms, well then the one with three bathrooms probably has a higher value. If one property was built more recently than the other, the newer home probably also is more valuable. The assessor then puts all of this data into a document commonly known as the tax card. Assessed value is important because it will determine how much you pay in property taxes. Remember, failure to consider taxes in your investment decisions guarantees your investments will fail. People have said to me, Peter, I bought a home with a fixed rate loan, so my monthly payments will never go up. And that's true that your loan payments won't go up, but your insurance premiums, and your property taxes just might. I have a rental property in a town that in one year more than doubled the assessed value. So in just one year, my property taxes, which are part of the cost of owning the property, nearly doubled. My mortgage payment is the same, but the total expenses of the property went up a lot. The other consideration is that sometimes tax assessors are flat out wrong about your property and you are being overcharged. A simple, wonderful, and free financial exercise that you can do is just to go to your municipality's website and click on the tax assessor's office. There you can type in your property address and see what your town thinks that your property is worth. If you are a real estate investor, you can type in other property addresses and see what the town thinks those properties are worth. As a general rule, assessed real estate values are below market and appraised values. Think about it. The town doesn't want to fight with every property owner who has a legitimate case that they are being overcharged. So the towns err on the conservative side and tend to keep the assessed property values lower than what they really are. But by checking the tax card of your current property, you can discover if you're being overcharged. For example, if the tax card says that you have two bathrooms and you only have one, well, you could be paying more tax than you should. You are able to call the town and request a reassessment. A word of caution here. When you request a reassessment, there is a good chance that the tax assessor will visit your home. Remember, you invited him in this time. And he might come in and say, well, even though you only have one bathroom, I didn't realize this was your backyard. And then your assessment value is even higher. Yeah, that's my backyard. Landscaping gets a little exhausting. In general, it only makes sense to ask for a reassessment if you are clearly being overcharged. By the way, if you are a real estate investor and you ever see a property for sale that is selling below its assessed value, well, then that is a pretty clear sign that there may be a value opportunity there. The last thing to know about property taxes is certain things are taxed less or not at all. For example, in a town that I own property in, they do not tax the value of a solar array. Even though the solar array lowers the electric bill, essentially producing more income for the property, and it raises the value of the property, in this town, they don't tax it. In many towns, farmland and vacant land are taxed less or not at all. So if you fell asleep, and I almost did, just remember that municipalities have a tax assessor who determines the value of your property for tax purposes. Property taxes are fees paid to the municipality based on the value of the property. Most cities and towns get most of their money from property taxes. But what about our old friends Jake and Elwood Blue? We're on a mission from God. In the film, the Penguin tells the brothers that St. Helen of the Blessed Shroud has been reassessed, which we now know means the property has been revalued. The new value is obviously higher. That's why the orphanage owes $5,000 more in taxes. So is this accurate? Well, cities do impose property taxes, and they do conduct reassessments. But there are two problems with the plot here, at least financially speaking. One, nonprofit organizations are typically exempt from property taxes. Doesn't the church have to pay that? This has, at times, been a political issue, as some folks have argued that religious institutions should pay property taxes. In towns big and small, religious structures often have the prime real estate because they were often the first structures to be built in town. Some folks say that these religious buildings should pay into the tax system. However, at the time of this recording, churches, mosques, synagogues, and other religious properties are typically exempt from property taxes, and that includes 
faith-based orphanages. So the first problem is that St. Helen of the Blessed Shroud is probably exempt from property taxes. That $5,000 that our friend the penguin claims she needs, she probably doesn't need. The second problem is that even if the property was reassessed and the orphanage had to pay the $5,000 in property taxes, cities don't give you a short deadline to pay up. For a city or town to actually take your home because of back property taxes, there is a long and lengthy process that includes notice after notice after notice. Often what towns do is put a lien on your property, which means the property cannot be sold, renovated, or refinanced unless the outstanding tax bill is paid. So I'm sorry, Blues Brothers fans. Financially speaking, this film misses the mark. That's why I need to give it one out of three dollar signs. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have an idea for a movie that I should review for its financial accuracy, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'm Peter Billigus, and this is Money in the Movies.